the criminals, the real criminals or the real criminal organizations never, ever shot a cop. And when they did find them, let me tell you something. There was no bleeding heart lawyer from NYU or Columbia telling us about the bad childhood the cop killer had. Let me tell you something else. If we don't go back to the times uh, that I lived in, there'll be no times for you to live in at all. Charlie on WABC, what's your point? Go ahead, please. Yeah, Mike, I'm your age. I was born and raised in New York City. And when I was a kid, I was told by my father and my uncles who were cops that if you killed a cop, never mind making it to court, you didn't make it to court because a lot of them were shot attempting to escape. If you get my drift. But the word was out. You just didn't kill cops because you were dead. You were a dead man if, if you killed a cop. So, so this brings us to the question of the day. Why are criminals now so emboldened that they kill cops? Because they know they can get away with it. You know, they, they know there's no consequence. They know that even if they're caught, Marvin from the ACLU will plead their case and they will never pay the penalty for that cop killing because the vermin in the ACLU have decimated the legal system and have destroyed and intimidated the police in America. It's a shocking truth. It's a horrible reality, but it's all part of the war against America by Barack Obama and his minions of leftist fanatics. I see it as clear as a bell. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a, an orchestrated war against the police that was triggered by the man in the White House. And I'm not asking anyone to agree or disagree. That is my opinion. It's that simple. I don't need any confirmation for what I see to be real. How do you like that? I'm not going to pretend that I really don't know what's going on and I need your opinion. I don't really need your opinion. I understand exactly what happened. I know that this maniac wants this to happen. Oh, I don't mean actually kill police. I know he gave some heartfelt uh, statement last night about, let's see, which cop killing was that one? Hmm. Oh, the one in, in Texas, that's right. When that white cop was shot in the back of the head by a black man. Yeah, I think even Obama had to come up from the ice cream and give a speech on that one. Well, now he's up in Alaska renaming mountains uh, for um, political purposes. You understand what he's doing up there, don't you? He's a community organizer. He's organizing the Inuits who don't vote to make sure that they vote for a Democrat, socialist, Islamist uh, from here on into the future. Do you understand what he's doing? He's agitating in Alaska. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. So. so Obama's up in Alaska renaming uh, mountains and uh, putting out the fraudulent information about global warming in order to push that lie. i give you a little evidence to that effect if you're a, a doubter about what I'm saying to you. He's up there talking about global warming and how... Uh, the world's coming to an end, melting sea ice and this and that. And at the same time, story on CNN says Obama wants new Coast Guard icebreakers in the Arctic. So I, I scratched my head. I said, wait a minute. If all the ice is melting because of global warming, I, I thought, why does their uh, leader, dear leader, need new icebreakers? Because he's a liar. That's all, a liar and a fraud. It's as simple as that. See, the United States once had seven icebreakers in its fleet, but now because the military has been downsized and deballed, it has only two icebreakers that are functional. R <clears throat> Russia has 40 icebreakers, with 11 more planned on the construction. And so, uh, Presidente will call on Congress to approve funding for replacing a new heavy icebreaker by 2020. Now, what does he need icebreakers for? They're designed to cut through open water ice, and are in high demand as industries push closer to exploration of either of the Earth's poles, according to the Coast Guard. So in other words, the glaciers are melting, they're going to disappear, the uh, animals are going to all die, but they need icebreakers anyway. Uh, which one is true, Mr. Obama? The answer is, can you ever get the truth out of a skilled liar, a rhetorician like him? But let's go back to the war on police, which he triggered, in order to make certain that police resign Police are intimidated. His, his, uh, his thugs are empowered in the streets. Do you understand how dangerous this is for you, the average citizen? I was recently in New York, what, two weeks ago? And on the surface, New York is a beautiful city. 
but right under the surface, there is a menacing presence that can be felt by anyone who has a nervous system. Right under the surface, there are the guys with the cups, shaking the cups in your face, right outside Central Park, right inside Central Park, up and down 7th Avenue. They're shaking the cups, but I guarantee you they have a box cutter inside their coat. And I guarantee you they'll cut your purse right off your body or cut the wallet right out of your pants if they sense that you're weak and that you have something of value. It's a jungle that is kept in check only by the police, the thin blue line, which de Blasio has d attacked repeatedly along with his leftist cohorts. And you know, there are consequences to rhetoric. The consequences now are dead police. And I wanna play for you, for those of you who were unable to listen to the show yesterday because you're on a long weekend, part of the three hours I spent dedicated to stopping this war on police. Let's hear it. If I don't like it, I'll cut it off. Let's play it. He has not called for the end of the killing of police by black radicals. He is behind it as sure as I'm standing here. Now, you have to understand how this all works. I laid awake in bed last night and I said this is all part of his master plan. And remember, I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War. He has neutralized the military by decapitating the active leadership of the military. He has only yes girls running the military, and that includes the men who are left. He has fired any general who would have stood up to him. He has gotten rid of any admiral who could have blown the whistle on Benghazi. He has decapitated the military the same way Stalin did, the same way every other dictator did, except in dictatorships they just shot them. Here they smear them and fire them. Make no mistake about it, this very dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House has deballed our military and that is why they're not fighting the war against ISIS. That's number one. So he lets ISIS rage across the Middle East. And in America, he releases the mobs on the white police in order to corral them and keep them because they are the only ones who could possibly stand up to what he has coming and what he has in mind. If you think, if you actually think that this dangerous revolutionary Marxist in the White House is simply going to go quietly into the night, uh, in 2016, you are crazy. You are mistaken. He has much more damage ahead for this country. I warn you, he has deballed the police, he has deballed the military, and he's doing it all so that we, the people, are backed into a corner. That's one man's opinion. This is a federal plot to take over the police force, to federalize all local police forces, because they are largely white policemen. This is all about racism from Barack Obama, who is clearly the most racist president you could ever imagine, occupying the highest office in the land. And if you think I'm the only one saying it, well, I really don't care if I'm the only one saying it. But I won't be the only one saying it tomorrow. Because millions of you understand that what I just said to you is 100% true. Well, that was yesterday's, a piece of yesterday's show, and I don't, my opinion is the same today as it was yesterday, and I never thought I'd wake up to another cop dead. If you care to chime in on this subject, the phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's go to New York City. Ryan, go ahead. What's on your mind? How are you, Dr. Savage? I just want to let you know and let the people know that me and all the New York City and everywhere throughout the United States, I'm a police officer. We're going to do our job every day. We're going to protect black, white, liberals that shouldn't be protected. And unfortunately, our animal president, I will be there every day to do my job. I put my uniform on, and I guarantee you every police officer in the United States will do the same. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. Okay, I'm glad you're going to do your job. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it with de Blasio as a mayor who hates police. I don't understand how you can do your job. When the criminal has more rights than you do, with the cockamamie, lunatic, pothead drug addicts in the ACLU jumping on your back every time you defend yourself, that's why the bums get the beat on you. That's why the street rats are able to kill you. Stop and frisk worked very well. It worked real well in New York. And then, and then they came along that was racist. Well, it wasn't racist. Anyone who looked suspicious, they shook down, had a gun, they threw him in jail, took the gun away. If it turned out that, were, that there were more minorities that had guns than others, that wasn't racism, it's what was. You can't twist everything into racism unless you're a sick degenerate. You can't make everything into a racist story unless you're mentally disturbed. 
Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Are you now or have, have you ever been a racist? Are you now or have you ever been a racist? So the left is now conducting a new form of McCarthyism, giving everybody the old litmus test, looking for racism under every rock, finding racism in the latest study even amongst the blind. Yeah, I got that report this morning. A genius sociology professor who in my day would have been sweeping floors in Creedmoor Mental Hospital, but now she's a professor of sociology at some college somewhere. She determined through her great scientific studies that even blind people can be racist. I swear to God, this is how far this has gone. This is how far the madness of the Stalinism that uh, has emerged in America has gone. Even blind people can, can be racist, according to these sickos. Okay, let's go to the next callers. I don't want to take the most, uh, let us say, angry calls about the dead police. But let's take some of them because some of them are worth hearing. Uh, let's go to, I don't want to just do New York. I need other, here we go. Well, I don't know. That's a little hot to take. MAL, Washington, D.C. James, you're up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. I just wanted to bring up the potential second order effects of this. And that is, I have a brother-in-law that was a uh, city cop in uh, Memphis, Tennessee for eight years. Several commendations, a good policeman. And his friend was the one that got killed in Memphis. And he has subsequently quit the force and moved to a small town in Alabama to become a uh, deputy sheriff. And I really feel like that, you know, that's probably... Is that because Memphis is run by liberals who are letting the gangs rage out of control? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right under the surface. I really think... Right under the surface on Beale Street. Right under the surface on Beale Street, you take your life in your hands while you're munching on a rib. Absolutely. All right, I hear you. I love Beale Street when I was down there when I visited the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. It's an astounding place to visit. And uh, you know, I'll never forget my visit down there, but I didn't know that that city was that, was that dangerous. I should have known, but I really didn't pay attention to that. I enjoyed the ribs and beer, frankly, and uh, the visit to the memorial. But we're talking about the war on police. And the reason police are being killed are, there's a couple of elements I have to reiterate. One, because the federal government has debased the police in America. We'll just say the federal government, so I don't have to say Obama anymore. You know who the villains are. The federal government has conducted an unending propaganda war against our thin blue line. That's number one. Number two, the vermin in the ACLU and other civil liberties organizations who are the friends of the criminals, and as far as I can tell, actually are funded by criminals. The, the best I can figure out is these civil liberties groups are generally funded through front groups that are really funnels for criminal organizations. But that's a subject for another individual at another time. And I don't want to go into it right now. They're not really altruistic. They're working on behalf of the gangs and the actual gangsters in order to uh, make the job of the police that much harder. And, and uh, number three, the number three reason is that the police are so intimidated by a threat of a lawsuit, the criminals know that. The criminals also know that if they do kill a cop or hurt a cop or beat up a cop, if they're caught, they're going to get off with a light sentence, if no sentence at all, because of the climate of hatred that has been uh, disseminated by the federal government. And I'll rest, I'll rest at that point. Now let's go to line number five, Sterling on BAP in Dallas. What's on your mind, Sterling? Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I uh, wrote a list here of all the things that I'd like, so if you'll give me a little time. Well, I don't know that I'm going to give you a little time. Why don't you start with the top two? All right. The police have become a domestic uh, army. They shoot everybody, and they don't shoot to cripple. They shoot to kill. They're wrong. Rarely are any policy changes made to reflect this misconduct or abuse. Okay, I know. I know you're reading from a script given to you by a group. So your your position is the police are no good. I'm, I'm sitting in a goody goody truck delivering liquor. I wrote it myself. Okay. So why do you have a vendetta against the police? Are you an ex-con? No, sir. I, I have no no vendetta. Actually, most of my family are in law enforcement, uh, fire department, DEA. Uh huh. So why do you, why do you feel the 